Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. You're actually getting a lot of support, uh, which could be an issue with a seat, when it comes to the seating at, at Rogers Arena. Rogers I, Arena. I'm shocked. Because I am a man of the people, and you two, again, one of you doesn't go into Rogers Arena. Okay, fine. And, I haven't been to a game and, in a while, Ryan. It, you can't hold that against and me. And the other one only goes where there's a free food and drink and gold-plated uh, plates. Wow, he's no. just ripping us. Like, no. unbelievable. No. But that's fine. Don't worry, your karma will be coming for you. Keep in mind, Ryan, with our texting last night in mind, Yeah, <laughs> you might not want to be ripping into me on the air, Yeah, because I think you owe me this one. This is very godfather-like of you. <laughs> That's right. We don't want to be getting into details here, but heads up. Yeah. One phone call, and somebody's not golfing somewhere. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, Every Thursday, we have John Shannon, NHL analyst and uh, co-host of the Bob McCowan uh, podcast on. T- today is no exception. John, thanks for doing this. How are you, sir? What time's our tea time? <laughs> I'm working on it. I'll get back to you. Okay. Okay. Just can't get, give, me two, give me two days notice. I'll tell you this. <laughs> yeah. you, you're, you're from Oliver, B.C., and one of, the, one of the nicest golf courses I've ever been on, Fairview Mountain in Oliver. If you haven't been there, folks, check it out. Have you golfed there, John? Oh, I, my! The, the old Shannon Homestead was about uh, three quarters of a mile from Fairview Mountain. You could look out and see how many people were on the course every day if you with, with your binoculars. Brian McDonald does a magnificent yes. job there. It is, uh, it I, in my opinion, it is one of the great golf secrets mm-hmm. I, I, of in Canada. In uh, Canada, it yeah. is just a it built in 1922, I think. Uh, I originally played it when it was just a nine-hole golf course, Donnie, and it had yep, sand yeah. greens. There you go. There you go. So that's that's how long ago I played it. By the way, uh, Broadcasting 101, that Brian McDonald name drop there was just uh, excellent. Just fabulous. <laughs> Write that <laughs> down, Rick. That's how you do it. Just smooth as can be. Yes. Have you ever gone to oh. a, sp- a sporting event lately and thought to yourself, like a big league sporting event, National Hockey League, and thought to yourself, you know, my seat doesn't feel quite yeah, right. Yeah, have, you ever, right. have you ever done that? The cushioning's not off a bit. No, I'm usually in the Champions Club eating uh, <laughs> oh. and uh, drinking red wine. Yeah, it's, I, I, uh, it's funny, uh, as a fan, I was trying to think. So so I, I was a season ticket holder, bench seats at Empire Stadium, mm. okay? Yeah, yeah. Section AA, row 15, seats one and two. Wow, uh, and 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 we used to we used to marvel at places like McMahon Stadium and Clark Clark Stadium in uh, in Edmonton. Edmonton, and they had they had backs on their seats. Mm. We didn't have backs on our on the seats at Empire. So, nope. <laughs> um, I mean, it was it was that that was to have a back on your seat. That was luxury. Yep. Yeah. Forget about padding. Yeah, padding. Yeah. Come on. I know. How can you complain when there there's at least oh, some padding man. there at, at Rogers Arena? Okay. Yeah. So overtime yesterday. Sorry, John, but uh, overtime. I, you know what? <laughs> we could discuss this more, but Ryan went way over on his over side. over. Lightning yeah. over the Avs. Uh, probably Avs over the Lightning in overtime yep. uh, last night. Is this series going to come down? This is what I thought. Is this series going to come down to Avalanche speed versus Tampa resiliency? Well, I, I do think Tampa is going to have to improve its speed somehow, some way, uh, and I, I do, st- I do think it's going to be a challenge in Denver with the elevation. I, I think that mm. not enough has been made, is made, about playing at you know fifty two hundred and eighty feet. Uh, it, it is a challenge, and and trust me, I think it'll be a, a bigger issue in the second game than it is in the first, as as the bodies adapt. Um, he, here's the thing, though. Um, Andre Vasilevsky, the first two goals were brutal. Yeah. Let's face it, brutal. Are we even talking about this if those two goals don't go in? I don't think we are. I, I think that I think Tampa will find, are resilient. Yes, um, I don't think they ever panic. I don't think they're panicked now, and I still think they're going to win the series. That's how good they are, yeah. and we haven't seen the best of Nikita Kucherov yet. You know, we made the one great play yeah. on the Palat yeah. goal. We're going to see more from him. I, I still think the Tampa Bay Lightning three-peat. 
You heard it here first. Uh, John, last week uh, you and uh, Nick Kiprios uh, talked about Vancouver and the country club atmosphere, big changes coming. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Well, I, the only thing I would say is that I, I think that Jim, Jim Rutherford and, and his people and Patrick Alvin, um, you know, they their plan has not changed. You know, even with the success with Bruce behind the bench and the improved play since uh, since the the firings and hirings, uh, they're not changing their goals. And and they have a plan that they're good at, that they are in the midst of putting in place. We've seen a few of those things right now, whether it be that you know what the Twins do, what Mike Commissarek does, Cami Granado. Uh, I think we're going to Emily Castonguay. I think we're going to see more. Uh, and I, I just think that Jimmy has a plan that he's going to put into place, and, and we're going to have a better idea from a uh, from a perspective of what the Canucks will look like after the draft and after free agency. The one thing I would tell you, uh, Rick, was, uh, and I had this told to me a, a few times during the pandemic, was that the rules and regulations that the NHL had put in place uh, th- through the whole league uh, it was a lot more lax in Vancouver than it was in other places. Right. Uh, and, and, and obviously the Canucks got hurt badly by that uh, at a certain point when how many guys did they have in the protocol? Was it over oh, 20? Over 20. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and so that, that was a concern for a lot of people. And, and uh, that's where the, the, the thought was that, Hey, what, what is going on in Vancouver? Why is this happening? Why aren't they obeying the rules? And hey, listen, as a as a British Columbian, <laughs> there's always that philosophy in the back of your mind. Well, it works for everybody else, but we don't have to follow it here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no kidding. They no. won't notice. We're on the other side of the mountains. They won't That's notice. That's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, Fair Yeah, no kidding. Uh, John, oh, we hey, talked there you uh, go. Brian McDonald again. That's Brian good. McDonald. <laughs> John, we talked about uh, Gary Bettman and his just you know. He believes in Arizona. He's said it again yesterday. People, uh, like, what do you think it is? Is it just him being stubborn? But what is it about Arizona he's not giving up? He's moved Atlanta. He's moved other places. What is it about Arizona? Top 10 TV market. Yep. Big part of it. Um, You know, he gave up on Atlanta when he couldn't find someone else to buy it. Oh. Uh, and that's that, you know, and when, when the five owners that were, you know, they were suing each other, it was a, uh, it was a legal nightmare. They threw the car keys on the table and said, we're done. And then, th- then Gary went and found a, a suitable place for it. Here, here's he, he, you know, he, he, he's quite proactive in these types of things. He is always trying to nurture and create ownership. You know, are you interested in a team? If I can find you a team, would you be interested? I used to joke, I, you know, that at his big desk uh, in the NHL office, there was this this legal pad and, and he would have names on it of people that he would just try to create relationships with. Uh, and I think I don't think that's changed. Um, you know, they were able to find Alex Morello uh, to to buy it, uh, you know, and, and here and here's the thing. The best model, the best person he ever found to take over a troubled franchise was Jeffrey Vinnick. Mm-hmm. And look what's happened in Tampa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's the model that he now goes and sells to every potential owner. Mm-hmm. Look what Mr. Vinnick has done with Emily Arena. Look what he's done with the surrounding area. Look at the condominiums. Look at the hotels. Look at the nightlife. All under the Vinnick Sports and Entertainment banner. And that's what people are being when when they when they sit down with the commissioner and say, "Okay, I'm interested in buying a team," or "Why would I buy a team?" These are the types of things that they get told. This is your potential, huh. and 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 that's that's nothing new. Um, but I do, th- I mean, uh, you know, he has always been loyal to the fans in Arizona, in Phoenix, in Glendale, now in Tempe. Uh, and if they're able to put this deal together for almost two billion dollars uh, for the new arena and entertainment district in Tempe, then it's a win. Look, I mean, look, guys, he, he was instrumental in 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 reinventing Edmonton. Mm, uh, yeah. You know, they they had they did not have a they they were at loggerheads in Edmonton from from the old Rexall to downtown, uh, and and like this is what his job is is yep. to 
create business, nurture business, promote business. Um, and I think if you're an owner in this league, he's done a pretty damn good job for it. And, and very quickly, John, uh, speaking of Gary Bettman, uh, he and Bill Daly announcing that revenues are expected to reach a record $5.2 billion this season. Uh, what has led to that success? Well, I, I think a little bit has to do with uh, the new broadcast uh, deals, mm -hmm. but what, what really it has to do with more than anything is ticket sales are robust again in most cities. Yeah. Um, and, and the loyalty of their corporate partners. It, it truly is amazing, uh, you know, who has stuck with hockey through the pandemic. You know, the people like Scotiabank who have stuck mm -hmm. with them through this. The, look at that corporate partner list uh, that has, has done just a, a tremendous job of sticking with them. Now, we've got news. We've got signage on helmets. We've got mm -hmm. new virtual signage on the ice. We're, we're going to have signage on sweaters next year. The league has been very creative in trying to generate new areas of revenue, and the partners have responded. Is that McDonald MAC or is it just MC, uh, John? I just yeah. call him Brian. Okay, uh, there you go. I just call Brian. You know, Brian was a pretty good junior hockey player. Wow, I'll remind him of that when I give him a call. <laughs> Thanks, John. Get the Shannon rate. They'll charge you double. Oh, okay. Double. Yeah. Double. <laughs> okay. Thanks, John. We're trying to get the other rate. It's yeah. called free. Hey, you know what? I, was, it's, I know we've run out of time. I was going to sing okay. the Lions fight song, but we'll save that for next well, week. Well, we'll do that. Yeah, we, we'll, 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 we'll find an instrumental you can sing along to. We look forward to that. <laughs> I do a cappella, man. I do a yeah. cappella. Wow. Come on now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look, see if you can somehow work uh, sh the old Shannon Homestead into the lyrics, and then then we'll have something. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Cheers. Okay, appreciate it. I'm getting the wrap-up sign here from uh, uh, from Ryan.